This is my video for the Phoenix Two-Gun Action Challenge match held February 27th, 2021, also featuring remote brutality. This is an empty rifle start. The shooter transitions, then engages a single small steel plate all the way at the back of the bay. Already I can tell the Freedom Munitions ammunition I re-zeroed my Glock with is performing better accuracy-wise than the MagTac I was using before. This plate rack is a row of six circles, then six squares, then six triangles. You can only shoot down one plate rack at a time before going back to engage two more plates on this plate rack. If you shoot down the wrong plates while you're engaging the plate rack, you do incur no shoot penalties. Full primer strike on this round, but it did not fire. We'll see if that remains to be a problem with this batch of ammunition. I'm first armored and first overall on this stage. The rifle begins loaded with two rounds. The shooter has to engage one of the paper through this tire, show clear, then start flipping the tire towards the next shooting position. The tire isn't incredibly heavy, it's just awkward, particularly with a rifle slung over your back. While I'm doing this, I'll point out that these bays are oriented facing east on the range, and that's why there's such a high amount of glare as we're looking downrange. This will become a problem as I engage the pistol targets, which are a Texas Star and three steel on the ground. We are limited to 10 rounds on the pistol portion. If you miss, it's a miss, plus 10 seconds. Once the tire is in position, the shooter draws their handgun and engages the pistol steel through the tire. My Delta Point Pro is coated in a fine layer of sand from the environmental conditions on the range, which makes the lighting conditions appear even worse looking through the optic. In the end, I miss two of these targets, and I take plus 20 seconds in penalties. The shooter now reloads their rifle and engages the second paper target. I'm third armored and fourth overall on the stage. Plus 20 seconds at a total time match is a lot to come back from. Let's see what happens. This is a stand and deliver kind of stage. Each of the seven paper targets requires two hits to the body and one to the head. You have three magazines loaded with seven rounds each. On my run for score, I'm first armored and second overall, with only one plus one penalty outside the zero zone. This run is for science. I put one hit on each of the seven targets and reload on the transition back. What this does is it allows me to reload at a more natural place on the transition back and not have to think so much about which target is remaining. The net result is about three seconds faster. This is the remote brutality stage. We have a single mini Ipsic target out at 50 yards. There's a 44 pound kettlebell. We have to throw it and that becomes the next shooting position from the prone. Every time we get across the 15 yards between shooting positions and get the hit, it takes 10 seconds off our score. The idea is to keep doing this for 180 seconds and see how many iterations you can get back and forth all the way and get that hit. I'm using my KP-15 with Han 9mm conversion block for this match. I wish I had used one of the 20 round mags on this stage because the 32 rounder is not allowing it to sit level with the bipod deployed. Uh, the main reason I'm using the bipod is it makes reacquiring the rifle after each throw easier. Don't necessarily need it for support to hit the targets, but it is more convenient to pick up. But it would have been even more convenient to use the 20 rounder and have it remain level and uh, not have to readjust it the further I get into this course. Every time I go prone, it's painful. There's a lot of jagged rocks in this portion of the range, and uh, knee pads and gloves only help so much.
In retrospect, I think it would have been better to try to go for three average throws every time rather than spending too much time winding up. There was no way to get this across in two throws, so by going all in on two large throws and then one kind of short throw, um, it ends up wasting time. Just think you have to do that one more time entirely. Huh? This has another 90 to go. Yeah. At this point, I'm getting fatigued and everything hurts, so you can see my enthusiasm draining the further I get into this course. You can see the more chewed up the ground has gotten, the less stable the gun is on the bipod. Here at 150, you can get one more for sure. Just, just go to the fault line. That was your best throw. <laughs> hey! 164. With only 16 seconds remaining, I decide to stop. Yep. There's no way to get back across and get another bonus in that time frame. As you can see from the results here, three was the most bonuses anyone managed to pull off for score. We did have one guy who did it a second time, uh, refined his throwing technique and missed less that was able to get four at 172 seconds. So I think it's possible if everything goes perfectly to get to four, but I think that's about max you can do within this par time.